gentlemen, the whole world, this is Shimshan Lashinsky welcoming you to the first ever Shimshan Lashinsky Kebab Tour. Basically, just explaining what kebab is, but we've got a lot going on. Is kebab just a Middle Eastern meatball or is there a lot more to it? We're going to find out. We've got to define our relationship with kebab. Is it just a Middle Eastern meatball or is it a whole spiritual experience? You're going to find out here. The first place we're going to go to is called Ktsitsot, which is called meatballs. His fa father is a butcher and he himself has been in the business, meat business since he was born. He's always been there. So we're going to go through the back alleys of the market to find him. I hope I find the place. Are you ready to come for the challenge here, guys? Are you ready for the kebab crawl? Are you ready for it? Okay, the kebab heroes. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Let's go. The reason why we started here was because Mayor has been in the meat game for so long. He knows the texture of combining um, beef with a certain amount of fat. And it was fresh meat. Um, his, his father is a butcher, his grandfather is a butcher. So it was a delicious uh, combination. Of course, if we just had a sample. You could sit here all day and eat a few of these. But we've got the next stop to go. So I would give him 8 out of 10. למעשה זה שילוב מאוד מאוד מדויק בין שומן, אחוזי שומן מאוד מאוד מדויקים ובשר באיכות מאוד גבוהה. כשיש לנו בשר באיכות מאוד גבוהה וכמות שומן טרי, 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 באיכות מאוד מדויקת, זה השילוב המנצח. כן תבלינים, יותר תבלינים, פחות תבלינים, בעיניי זה פחות חשוב. מה שחשוב זה שלושה מרכיבים. הראשון זה איכות הבשר, השני זה איכות השומן ופריות השומן. והדבר השלישי זה איזשהו שילוב של בצל, שהסוד הגדול בקציצה הזו זה שבבצל הזה למעשה אין הרבה נוזלים. It's the newest kebab places in, in Jerusalem. It just opened two weeks ago. It's run by twins. Um, they're following their dreams. Um, he's got a very good story about it. And it's doing quite well at the moment. So I think you'll be impressed what's going on here. Okay, this is a new place, it just opened two weeks ago. It's part of a chain, it's a franchise. Um, Nadav here, he used to work in welfare. He was cooking in a, a, a city called Beitar uh, for, dis, dis, for youth with problems. He loved cooking and he's decided to get into the business. So we're going to have Nadav, he's one of twins running the show. He's going to explain us his vision of what a good kebab is. And of course we're going to go in there into the meat. I'll just bring my t-shirt and we're going to go into the, the kitchen. And you're going to get the full show here. First of all, thank you very much for all of you. Thank you. You're going to be your dreams after his dreams this guy. He and his brother really wanted to stay open this place. It's very successful. Um, Ma, what's the role of the trina in kebab? Is trina important for kebab? Is it important? Trina? Trina in kebab is really important. This combination of the kebab and the trina that is important. It's the most important thing. Yes, I'm very excited to eat the food. I'm very excited to eat the food. פתחתי, היה לי מקום לפני זה, גם אוכל אמריקאי, פולביף, פאפרס, אתה יודע? באתי למחנה יהודה, שהוא אחד השפקים הגדולים בישראל. הוא נחשב היום, אפשר לומר, המיינסטרים של השוק. 
ומשם, ברוך השם, הגענו לקונספט המושלם הזה, שזה רשת עם שמונה סניפים, ואנחנו פה עובדים על כל דבר בדקדוק, כדי שהלקוח יקבל את הארומה הטעימה, ויחזור עוד פעם לכאן. מה יש לך? קווי דופי מרגז, קווי דופי מרגז. מי קצת תבינים זה סודי? אה, תבינים זה קוקה קולה. My tie because it's all got kebab stains all over it. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is part of the risks of the job, you know. Being a foodie and getting all my tie full of uh, kebab juice. Not easy. It's a, it's a difficult life, you know. It's, we have to do the best we can. So I really love the Cena. I thought it was very pure tasting. It wasn't diluted with lemon juice or garlic or cumin or anything funky like that. It just had a really nice, nutty, natural taste and I really like that. If one were asked to think about the quintessential Middle Eastern food, the answer might just be kebab. Alongside hummus, it's one of the most famous foods that tourists, when they come to Israel, seek out. Kebabs have actually been around since the 14th century. The earliest recorded history of kebabs probably goes back way before that, was uh, Turkish soldiers uh, using their swords to grill meat over an open fire way, way back in the 14th century. Since then, a lot's happened in the world of kebabs, particularly from Turkey, kebabs spread to Europe in the 20th century, and doner kebabs, as anyone who's been to Germany knows, doner kebabs are now a huge thing. But what about kebabs in Israel? Shawarma is famous in Israel. How good are the kebabs here? Where is good and what's new on the local kebab scene? To figure out the answers to these questions and more, we uh, met up with a local Jerusalem food commentator and uh, Facebook poster, Shimshon Sam Lashinsky, and a panel that he uh, pulled together. And we're here to see what some of the interesting kebab places are like in Jerusalem. So this is the conclusion of the kebab tour. I was good, I heard another five places, but I think we took the three best out of them. Believe me, I've been to them all. The Masoch and Kebab. Masoch. קודם כל, הסוד זה האיכות של הבשר. כן. כדי שבאמת הבשר יהיה איכותי, וצריך אפילו קצת עישון. כן. זאת אומרת, קבב טוב צריך לשכב במקרר יום אחד לפחות, 24 שעות, בטמפרטורה נעימה של בין 0 למינוס 1. כן. ולתת לו ככה, לספוג את הטעמים ביחד. הטיפול שלו הוא מאוד מינימליסטי, אני לא משתמש בהרבה תבינים בקבב. אחוז שומן טובה. 30 אחוז, ושאומרים לי, 30 אחוז זה הכי טוב. תראה, בגדול זה נע בין 25 ל-30 אחוז כן, וגם השומן צריך להיות איכותי. אתה יודע, יש כמה סוגים של שומן, גם פה אתה צריך להיות איכותי. אני חושב שאם אתה עושה את כל הדברים האלה ובאמת לש אותו כמו שצריך ומפרק ומחבר ביחד את כל השומן עם החלבון, אז יצא לך קבב בשיגור. We really got a diversity of kebabs tonight. We had tzitzot, which was kind of like the old classic bare bones kebab. Then we had pita basar, the new, trendy, new place. 
taking kebabs and like ma giving it a more personal flavor. And then we had mitzle, which I think really kind of gave it a modern, um, more like upscale. For me, I think Ksif South definitely takes the win. Um, it's the best kebab. It just really felt felt authentic, felt homey, and that, that takes takes the gold medal for me. Uh, the first place we went to had the atmosphere and the story were excellent, but even just talking about the meat, uh, he made something that was closer maybe to our rice, but uh, having the fat uh, in the bread, in the meat, uh, gave uh, a very, very strong, very rich taste, uh, which I really appreciated. It, it may have also helped that it was the first place we ate, so I ate at, but uh, I really appreciate it. And of course the salads uh, tasted very fresh, uh, and they were made there, and that definitely uh, added quite a bit. Okay guys, this is Shimshad Leshinsky. Um, thanks for joining us here. There's a lot more action. I, I post it in Facebook, Secret Jerusalem group, all the time. Um, I've also in the Shimshon Leshinsky fan club and um, the YouTube. You can find me as well. Lots of different lifestyle and food stories. And keep in touch and check me out. Last time on Shimshon Eats Jerusalem, a YouTube series. I claim this is the best falafel in Israel. The main special thing about them is they do it coarse and they make it green falafel, which means it's got cilantro and parsley and lots of other things. Full of flavor and it's a recipe from the grandmother, 95 years old, Aisha. So I'd say fantastic. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rose and I'm here today at the Ramada Hotel in Jerusalem. It's one of the big hotels at the entrance to the city. I'm here tonight with Jerusalem's favorite viral food influencer, Shimshom Lishinsky. We're checking out tonight what is the true story about the Jerusalem soup wars. Two hotels in the city, the Ramada Hotel and the Inbar Hotel, are running simultaneous competing soup festivals. Which is better? Shimshon's going to give us the answer. <music> Shimshon Leshinsky. We're at the Ramada Hotel in Jerusalem and here we are. Let's see how the soups are tonight. We've had them all. With, they're delicious. They're interesting. The chestnut mushroom soup. This I have to say was amazing. Full of flavor, full of color. I enjoyed it. Then we had the pumpkin squash soup. I would say it had a bit of a kick to it. It was a bit of ginger in there as well. That was quite nice. Come and have a closer look inside what we've got here. And then then we went, we tried the split pea soup here. Um, they served it actually with couscous. The couscous is finished now. It had split peas and rice. It has a lot of good things in here. That was a, a very wholesome soup. I think that was great. Then they had a vegetarian vegetable soup here. Um, this was also possible with couscous. That was just a very ordinary soup. I really can't go overboard on this one. It's a nice one, but it's not the best. And this one I didn't even have. My friends had it. Um, it was a very ordinary um, onion soup. Nothing too exciting about. Um, it may even have a, it may have a bit of wine in it. And then come this way and see all the things that we get with it. So we've got all these different things, nice breads. The breads are crusty with some butter. We have all these things. This was interesting. I don't know if you've ever seen before, pink trina. That was a very interesting idea. It's got a bit of beetroot in it. So we had a lot of interesting things here. And the whole deal is 65 shekels, which is $20, which is a good deal. We're scanning without looking at people. There's two parts of the, the main lobby here. There's the soup festival and there's the shidduch, matchmaking on the other side with about 15 couples meeting, um, coyly talking to each other and we've got some intense dating going on in the religious community and it's Thursday night is a big night for that. So this hotel, the Ramada Hotel, a lot's going on here. We have at the soup festival, Shimon is the chief chef of the soups. Not, Not only the soups. <laughs> no, soup. Okay, no. Shimon, we have to ask you the first thing. What is the secret of a good soup? People really need to know. Nice seasoning, a lot of soul. Salt? Soul. Oh, salt, okay. Yeah. If you put your salt, you've got a beautiful uh, soup. 
And how long has this soup festival been going on at the Ramada Hotel? How many years? I think we started to, uh, when I came here at uh, 2011, it was already running. Okay, so it's, it's a tradition. So it, was, yeah, it is a tradition, much longer than many other places. And I just want to say, I want to go through the soups very quickly. The pumpkin soup, I thought it was fantastic. It had a bit of ginger in it, is that right? It's had something a spicy. A bit of ginger, coconut. Yeah, so that sounded like a, the Indian style. That was great. Yeah. The mushroom one, that was interesting. What was with the chestnuts? The mushroom chestnuts. Mushroom chestnuts. That was yeah. great. It seemed like Shimshon and Shimon were getting on great. But then Shimshon dropped a bombshell. The rest of them, nothing interesting for me. The onion soup, it sounded a very boring soup. It Is wasn't, it? Yeah, it was like it had a lot of... It tasted to me like it had chicken soup powder in it. And it didn't really have chicken the soup. Onion? Clearly taken aback by Shimshon's verdict that the onion soup was boring and contained soup powder, Chef Shimon insisted that the two try it one more time. Yeah. Really? That's what it, that's what it tasted to me. I could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, I understand. I'd yeah. like to taste it with no, you. No, it's okay. Again. But, uh, and uh, so that found one a bit boring, this and I found the other bit. What? Really? This, yeah, this is our flashy. signature. So you know what? I'm going to go now with you and yeah. have some more because I didn't taste Absolutely. it. Absolutely. They tasted it. My friends. Can ah, I trust my friends ah. or can I not trust my friends? That Daniel Rosehill okay. and that other guy uh, Moses. Can I trust them or not? You tell me. We'll find I, out I now. Know. I trust what I see and what I taste. I didn't taste it. Now I'm going to taste it with you. Let's, Let's do the action. It. Let's. Okay, the onion operation. test now. Shimshon's attempts to defuse the tension in the room seem to have worked, for now. The two set off to try the infamous onion soup. One for you, one for me. No, uh, he's We're not gonna both taste. going to taste it. Oh, okay. The Ramada oh, okay. Hotel's credibility is raising is on this. Just a yeah. taste? Yeah, yeah. A little bit of uh, okay. cheese. I, does it have any wine in it? Yeah, I'll have a bit it of cheese. Is. It's got some wine Contained, in it? Yeah, yeah. Wow. White wine. A lot of white wine. Okay, we'll taste this. This is very and we'll give additional justice, uh, justice to the uh, onion soup. There's been nasty things said about it at our table. After Chef Shimon worked his charm on the food influencer, Shimshon suddenly seemed to have a change of heart. Mm. Hot. It, it's good. No, it's good. Um, people at my table, I don't think I'll be able to hang out with them anymore. I found it excellent. It's got some red wine in it. It is. Having tried the soup, Shimshon decides to offer a heartfelt apology to the chef. Yeah, Apologize to Shimon and the Ramada Hotel. The soup is delicious. A little bit too peppery, but maybe that's what a good soup needs a bit of pepper. Correct. It's got a bit of a kick to it. Correct. <laughs> Everybody should come to the Ramada Hotel, the soup festival. Having buttered up the soup man with some good old fashioned flattery, Shimshon even wings an invitation to the hotel kitchen. Guys, I've got an exclusive. Shimon has let us come into the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> will you come in with us or will you stay in the lobby? You decide. Okay. Ooh. Wow. This is going to be the wow, this is restaurant. Wow, I'm coming into the kitchen here. Shimshon desire. Come, Karim, no Shimshon. Here's Shimshon. Ata Shimshon, but now I Shimshon. We've got two Shimshon. One, two. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get my Shimshon t shirt in a minute. Not the Shimshon t shirt again. Now, here is our friend Moses. Come and do the video. Moses, look what's going on here. Celery soup. Celery soup, wow. Wow, amazing. With a lot of wine. While Shimshon was busy getting the very enthusiastic staff to take a Shimshon style t-shirt photo, we were getting ready to meet Shimshon's dining friend, Moses Newman, who's also a member of the Secret Jerusalem Facebook group. It's worth adding that Shimshon and Moses don't always see quite eye to eye about food. I want to thank the people who came to join me tonight. Daniel Rosehill, he always brings a lot of yeah, interesting comments, intelligence and charisma to the table. Thanks Shimshon! Um, uh, could we say that we've become from foes, we've become friends, is that possible? Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. we've made yeah, peace. Yeah. Shimshon yeah. has made peace with his number one critic. Uh, and uh, now we're on lo in line, now looking for a better future. Having turned around another soured relationship this evening, Shimshon and Moses decide it's time for a hug. Thank you very much. That was only slightly awkward, but the fun's not over yet. On his way out of the hotel, Shimshon runs into a group of fans from the Dominican Republic. Guess what? Shimshon has his t-shirt, which could mean only one thing. It's time for another selfie. Shimshon TV. Hi. How do you say we love you in Spanish? Te amo, te amo, te amo, te amo. They look awfully confused. Speaking of love, we hope you love this video. And if you'd like to get more videos from me, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.
Okay guys, this is Shimshon, uh, very interesting, exciting. I claim this is the best falafel in Israel, it's called Aisha. The main special thing about them is they do it coarse and they make it green falafel, which means it's got cilantro and parsley and lots of other things. It's a young couple, they just got engaged, so mazel tov. Thank you. And uh, they started the business together. Your names again, Eden and? Sefi. Yosef. Yosef. Sefi. Kodem ko batzlacha, mazal tov ala merusin. Ma, ma sod, lama kula moavim et falafo shelachem? Anachom mechinim kan baesek akol tari kol yom. Anachom notim lekulam sherutim chiyuch gadol ala panim. Anachom mechinim kan pitot shanachom ufim amakom. Chumos shanachom mechinim kan retavim meanyanim. Limon kavush shelanu. Mala dvarim tovim. Mi aisha sod et asafto shelcha? יבא ממרוקו בשנות החמישים לדבריה שם הכירה את השכנים שלה ממוצא לבנוני הם לימדו אותה להכין חומוס פלאפל ממש טעים היא הייתה מכינה לנו את זה בבית החלטנו להביא את זה לפה לירושלים שידמו חומוס מהצפון טוב עיישה זה חיה במרוקאית הפירוש זה חיה חיים וזה שם מאוד מפורסם Okay. okay, guys, should we taste it now? Are we ready to go the next step? And we've got our fan groups, fans, friends coming, Facebook guys. You would hear from London. Um, it's the first time here? Uh, yeah. And what do you think? Is this falafel different? Why is this falafel different from other falafels? Very tasty, good flavors. It's green inside uh, from the coriander parsley. Um, like it should be. They gave like a kind of. Uh, uh, like this side uh, lemon uh, sauce, which is very nice. YouTube channel Daniel Rosal here. I am in Shukman Mahane Yehuda on a Thursday night. Probably the busiest time I guess all week. I'm here today with uh, the famous Shimshon Sam Lashinsky. He's organized a impromptu meetup of his friends and his followers. Um, about 10 people showed up to check out the food. He recommends this place called Aisha. He says it's the best falafel in Jerusalem. I just ordered some. They have a couple of uh, special ingredients. They have tahina, which is very much a standard ingredient. Falafel stands, a sesame seed sauce, but they have it yellow because there's some curry in it and they have some pesto as well. So I always say that every falafel place in Israel does its own twist. Uh, so we're going to check out now. I've just uh, got my uh, portion, which is a half falafel because this is my second falafel today. We're going to see if it lives up to Shimshon's uh, great claims. What do we think of Aisha? I claim it's the best falafel in Israel, full of flavor, um, their coarse falafel, they put in green uh, parsley and um, coriander to make it a bit more different and it's a recipe from the grandmother, 95 years old, Aisha, who lives in um, Tiberias and it's run by a young couple who just got engaged. So I'd say fantastic. Now we'd like to ask other people here. And I love schnitzel and I give the schnitzel a nine and a half. It's pretty darn good. The harif was like buried a little bit down though, so I, I'd like it a little closer to the top to not have to fight my way down. But yeah, everything, uh, it's uh, tender, uh, crispy, and delicious. 
And the last thing is we have some chips here. It's a frozen product. It's decent. It's not outstanding. Jim Jones, have... how, how, how do you know the chips are frozen? Sorry? How do you know, how do you know they're frozen? You can see the way it's cut and everything. Uh, it's obvious to me. Okay. So, decent but not outstanding. I'm here today checking out a new place in Jerusalem with Jerusalem's favorite viral food influencer, Mr. Shimshon Lashinsky himself. This place is called Metro, it's located on Emma Rafaim Street, one of the biggest thoroughfares in Jerusalem. They do deli meats in sandwiches and we've ordered a selection and this is Shimshon's verdict. Can you believe it? We're in the center of Paris. This place called Metro, it's kosher. It's got a kosher certificate. He's making all sorts of interesting salami sandwiches. Actually, it's in Jerusalem, in Emma Gafaim Street, and you guy Leon. Good luck, Leon. We're happy to be here. We love it. We took this six, uh, fancy opera sandwich. It's got all sorts of smoked sausage in it. And we took also one with all sorts of interesting salamis. We had these um, fries. We've got a salad coming up. Reasonably priced. 50 shekels a sandwich. Lots of different kinds of topping and what is the pro how what do we think about it nice color delicious meats the one with the different salamis is more exciting than the one with the sausage the sausage doesn't have as much smoky flavor um, as it is metro number 32 emeka frame street Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal. I'm here today at a international food festival in Jerusalem. This uh, food festival is being held just outside the walls of the old city of Jerusalem. Spectacular setting. And I'm here today with uh, my friend and Jerusalem's uh, food, favorite viral food influencer, Shimshon Lashinsky and uh, Marcus James, a friend of ours as well. And uh, this is a really cool event. This place is divided into three. So there's a French section, an Italian section, and there's also a South American section. Entrance is free and it's a bunch of local restaurants and the prices are fixed up to 35 shackles. This event's been running since 2019, so it's in its fourth uh, iteration here. And uh, we've been to two places so far and uh, we made the mistake of uh, going for meat before dairy but everything here is kosher and the entrance is free as i said so you just need to pay for what you eat there's places to sit down there's marionettes circulating entertaining people so very very family friendly a uh, really cool event and this is running until the 14th of april so if you're looking for somewhere in jerusalem to bring your family if you're in interested in international food definitely uh, i recommend checking this place out hi guys this is an exciting time for jerusalem We've got, we're in the middle of, just before the festive season of the Passover holidays, we've got the International Jerusalem Food Festival. There's just so many things to eat. Everyone's thrown us out of the house. We, we have, the house is kosher le Pesach now. We need food desperately, and we've got fantastic opportunities here. It's a cheap price, 35 shekels, which is about $11. There's a very big controversy in Jerusalem, and people are very angry. There's two sides to the story. First of all, the people say, how can you have an International Jerusalem Food Festival a few days before Pesach when we're cleaning? When we're busy uh, for Pesach, we haven't got time to have fun. And on the other hand, there's all the people who just want to get out of the house and have some fun. So this is a question here. Throw out the husband, the kids, the wives, throw them out of the house and have some fun, or stay home and just get ready for Pesach. A lot of people are confused. A lot of people are worried. They don't know what they're doing. I'm here to help solve and find you clarity for anything here. So we're looking forward to having a lot of fun and see, experience different things, new flavors. Come and join me. been fed enough yet so once I feed more then I can eat more then I can work harder uh, two-thirds of every sandwich I buy how can I survive this is the jungle here
Rachel. She's, she won Master Chef a few years ago for her famous for her cheese sandwiches, and now she's branching out into meat sandwiches. It's been minced meat, and we've ordered one of her sandwiches. She has a, a place in Jerusalem in uh, dairy and in Tel Aviv meat, and um, she's blowtorching her sandwiches. Have you ever seen people blowtorch a sandwich before? It's the first day to make it a bit more crunchy, so we'll find out. Let's go for it. We have uh, the Rachel steak sandwich. It's with a barrecas. It's got all sorts of dips and uh, spreads, and, and uh, it's got a special cucumber, and it's going to be a bit spicy. It's got tahina, so it's all part of adventure. But look behind you and see what's going on there with Rachel. She's got a long line now starting up, so it's good. Let's see how we divide this with three people. I don't know how we're going to do that. I don't know. We'll try our best. It's hard work here. So try and have a bit, I don't know how we're going to do this. Here we are with the um, curry chicken from Siam and we're having discussions whether it's more Thai influence or more Indian influence. It's some sort of uh, combination, probably more Thai. And I'm, I normally like less spicy, for me it was delightful. It was just challenging enough, not too challenging. And a lot of different vegetables and colours in there as well. And I definitely tasted some coconut milk in there as well, uh, which makes sense. And uh, possibly cilantro, do you think? Or not? Yeah. So overall, I would give this about an 8 or 9 out of 10. It suits my the Israeli palate. It suits my um, standards or desires for Asian food. So, they well done. Really enjoyed. We're still in the middle of the food festival. There's about 30 or 40 choices. And we've tr we try to take things which are a little bit different from the usual. There's hamburgers here, there's churros, there's uh, steak sandwiches. And we've had two interesting things. And now we're looking for our third thing. And probably we'll go for this special kind of challah bread with meat inside. But there's so many other options we regret not eating, having the dairy, product, dairy one first. Our partner here, food partner Daniel Rosiel said, wait, wait, maybe there's going to be some dairy stuff that's good and those Georgians have certainly got it there. It's got all sorts of cheese and cheese on the chips and and there's it's kind of an amazing pastry as well. So always listen to the Daniel and you'll go well. We've got Georgian food here um, and they're putting in also they've got all sorts of interesting meats and we've taken the filling, the eggplant filled with nuts. So hopefully uh, we'll enjoy it. It looks looks interesting, it looks delicious, it looks delightful. That's a lot of raw onion there, so I don't know if we can eat that. And then sing in the choir, that could be a problem. And so we're going to see if it's savoury, it's supposed to be savoury or sweet. We'll find out in a minute. Let's try this. The dominant flavour is the fried eggplants. But the nuts certainly give it a bit of a crunchy taste as well. And there's no, I think they don't have garlic in their food, the Georgians. So it's quite interesting, it's delicious. Hi, Marcus James here. Happy to be along for the ride with the Shimshon Show, Shimshon TV, and to be tasting amazing food. Uh, absolutely enjoyable. Uh, this is the Georgian food with the nuts and eggplant. Roasted eggplant, I think, maybe fried, I, I don't know, it's debatable, but it's absolutely tasty. Just so you know, it's also served cold, so it's not a warm dish, but very tasty. Thai-in, thai Mmm. Uh, mmm. In any food festival, you always regret something that you didn't have. So we went, to, we went had meat, 
quite quickly. We didn't have the dairy. Daniel Rosehill said, wait, there'll be dairy stuff first, but we didn't do it. So now we need our food consultants here to tell us, have a taste and tell me what you think of this Georgian de delightful dish. Okay. Taste it and tell us. Mm, very good. That's tasty. Yeah, Did we miss out? Tasty. and enjoy these hot chips. Hopefully they're hot. We like them hot. We're having some of the fries and we feel like we're in America. So, um, pretty good. Um, it's basically a frozen product, so we have to be honest. It's not handmade, but it's, it's good. Uh, two coins, double, double. Fish tight. All right, and welcome, welcome here to our USA street. So you can enjoy yourself in the saloon over there and I will keep you safe, don't worry. Okay. By the way. You're a bro, you're a bro. Did you see my treasure? I don't know if I want to see your treasure, but you're a cool guy and keep up the good work. Oh, thank you, you know. thank you. We've been at the International Kosher Food Festival in Jerusalem and we just hit a bonus, we hit gold. We've got Susie Fishbein here from America. Wow. <laughs> And she, she's doing a lot of interesting things with food. She's now in Israel. She's looking at ideas. And generally, I want to ask you, what do you think of the Israeli food scene? I think the Israeli food scene is like none other. It's incredible. You can eat out every single meal and, and never exhaust your options. The quality is really interesting, fabulous. And I just, I like how all the different cultures come together. And you also write a lot of cookbooks. So, yes. um, Probably the number one Israeli cookbook would be Otolenghi, I'd say. Yeah, we get a lot we get a lot from him, what he does with the Israeli kitchen, the Middle Eastern kitchen. It's it's pretty amazing, isn't it's it? It's incredible, although a shout out to my girl Adina Sussman. Oh. I don't know if you know her book Sababa, but that was a huge success. Oh, okay. Um, okay. She lives outside the Carmel Market and really wrote like a love letter to tell all the events of the Israeli food scene in that book. But just in summary, because I've been I've probably done about three hundred food reviews in the last year and a half and I'm trying now to use less superlatives I'm trying less to get excited because sometimes the same restaurant is good and the next time it can be less good so we just had that discussion about a hot new restaurant that I had a great experience at Shimshon Lesso and I, I asked him I, I said you're in an unenviable un 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 position what when what happens when you go someplace and you don't like it or you find things that are wrong that must be very tough to decide yeah. how to write it is tough. I try to, to be honest and tell people what I thought about the meal. I don't want people to waste their time and money to go to a restaurant and, and, and go you. there and count on me because I'll meet them the next day. Well, I just feel responsible. On the other hand, I don't want to get sued because now we're hearing, uh, I spoke to a lawyer, uh, he's dealing with suing people for libel and, and all these kind of things. So it's kind of a very difficult balance here. Um, we're living a tough life with a lot of responsibility, but we're also pressing and having a lot of fun. So that's the main thing. I can't wait to get into the food festival. I think what you will. What did you think of that? Uh, it was interesting, but I think you've got to start with the Georgian uh, food, the Khachapuri. You'll love it. <laughs> okay, Chag Sameach and keep up the good work. Thank you. So if you want to keep following me, um, I've been every, a lot of different places, but Secret Jerusalem a Facebook group is an amazing place to go. And Keep seeing us and keep uh, and keep giving us likes and comments and come to Jerusalem. This is where the fun is.
different opinion about Guava. Is it better than the Aka? We can't say. This is it. Turkey for sure. Today, Jerusalem's best-loved food commentator and social media critic Shimshon Lashinsky has convened a group meetup with the goal of testing out three of Jerusalem's best shawarma restaurants. The goal? To find number one. And we found out there's all sorts of interesting spices. We've got some people are putting cinnamon in it as well. Cardamom, turmeric, there's a lot of things going in there. And Israel is unique that they do with turkey. The other ones are using other meats principally a lamb or beef because of kosher reasons they don't put yogurt on the, the meat here they, although they do that in Turkey and Greece but here we're taking you now to a very special place we're taking you to Turkish places that do imitation yogurt made from uh, possibly almond milk we'll find out from them now you should know these it's a cold nasty rainy day it, we're just before a lot of snowstorms so out of I advertised it on all the groups out of the thousand people who liked it, thousands who liked it and commented, only three showed up. The Shawarma Heroes, give them a round. Woo! These guys, Shawarma. the Shawarma Heroes, they did it. <laughs> they came, despite the rain, despite the hail, despite the cold weather. They're gonna be tasting, they're gonna be involved in everything. Okay, shall we do it? Let's go for it. Turkey Adventure in Jerusalem, take one. is some Swedish children's uh, story which a lot of people grew up on and somehow they combine that it's a goose flying in the air and they combine that with uh, lamb shawarma from Turkey they've got the blue con it looks like you in Turkey or in Greece it looks it's got an interesting image here but um, you'll see it sounds strange but it works I've eaten it a few times delicious but of course the main problem with, with shawarma places it's not always the same thing one time it's excellent and one time it's really bad. So let's hope today will be excellent. This is it, Akka. This is the Turkey of Akka. It's a bazaar of Egel, actually. There's a little bit of Shumana and Pistukim between. It's coming from the middle. It's a bazaar of Egel. It's 80% of the middle. The idea of the middle is the middle of the bazaar. We don't have a lot of food. It's like in Turkey, there's a crème shkedim. ויש שוגור טבעוני על בסיסו יעשום בננה ממש ממש טעים וכמובן אנחנו מחבקים את זה לפני שהם הולכים It's basically veal with some lamb in it um, He's not telling us how much lamb My guess it's a lamb fat on top really, it's mainly veal What's interesting is they have pistachios inside and they always wipe the, the, the lafa with the fat to make it more juicy Put in the first thing is that almonds? Uh, so Cordelia, okay. This is made, this is uh, almond dip. The yogurt definitely adds a bit of flavour and colour. Maybe a little bit more mint leaves would have been good, but we're going to other places that do that. We've got the onions, we've got everything fresh, full of flavour. My name is Max, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, when I saw, I love food. Uh, I love shawarma. Uh, when I saw Shimshon was doing a shawarma tour, I said I had to join. Uh, so far, we've been to Akka. Um, I liked it. The meat was not exactly to my tasting. It tasted more like a hamburger meat than, than shawarma meat. But so far, so good, and I'm excited to taste the, the rest of the shawarmas. I'm here with Yossi. Now, Yossi changed Jerusalem about a year ago. He started the Turkish shawarma. 
and explain the concept. The idea comes from traveling a lot. I come from the food industry. I've been working in the food industry for 30 years. Street food is uh, the most probably most accessible element of culture. We were looking to do something uh, during the corona. We opened in August between you know between within the middle of the corona and we're looking to do something uh, accessible, unique. I've got to ask you the million dollar question, then we're gonna move on because we've got two more stops. Go. If I wanted to have a, a shawarma which is only lamb, only lamb, how much would it cost me? Would it would it be a hundred shekels for that? It most probably would cost uh, I would say at least 50 percent more than what we're selling it. So but 75 shekels, around 75. 100 percent. I want it like I had in Australia, 100 percent lamb shawarma. It's too expensive for the public. Is that what you're saying? It's it's too expensive for the public. It would be a niche in Israel. If you open strictly lamb, it will be a very small amount of people that will actually go for strictly. The, it's never been more exciting to eat shawarma in Jerusalem. That is true. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Next up on the tour was Turkey Shook, opened somewhat more recently. Lishimsky recently gave it a strong review, but what would the other participants make of its food? And here we are, it's called Turkey Shook, it's a new place, maybe about a month or two around. Door is going to tell us about this place. Everyone's a big Turkey swimmer now, why are you better? אנחנו מכינים פה שווארמה שאין אותה בירושלים, זה שווארמה דונרי כטורקי, זה עגל וכבס. חמישים אחוז שומן, שווארמה מאוד מאוד דליפה, מאוד מאוד שומנית. Okay, so their main thing is tchina, so they're making it more Israeli to the Israeli taste. The other guy, he was doing it more to the Turkish taste. We'll have to decide what's better. He's letting us have a bit of both. So we all know what's going on really. It's more veal and less lamb. <laughs> the market would be the second one for me. Wow. It can be the second one. Like my shawarma with Zina, huh? they have, the but the other place did not have. This uh, food group is now completely out of control. We discovered here they added tahina to it. It makes it a whole different ball game. It takes it away from Turkey and more to Israel, but it still was more familiar and delicious for us. The second thing was here they have more of the, the lamb meat. It's, although it's very fatty, it was 50% lamb here. So I've got to say in some ways they give you a good fight here for your money. They give you more action. Here it costed 48 shekels for a serving. There it's 45. So let's go to the third place and see how this is uh, working out. We're doing our best here with the cold, the rain, we're, we're doing everything to get the, the news to you as it happens in Jerusalem. Everyone's got a different quality than me. But I'm reading on the internet a lot of, uh, a lot of reviews. The same place, one day it's good and one day it's really lousy. So it changes depending what meat they have that day, what service they have, you know. But where we go, it's run by Avi Levy. Everyone knows about him, he's a master chef. He won the tele Israeli television show, Master Chef. He's got a real Turkish guy working there. So, and he's got it turning around on a rotisserie. So we're gonna feel like we're in Istanbul. Let's go there. What is this group? What, who are we? We're just very simple, Shimshan TV. That's what we are. <laughs> With bellies getting full and a Jerusalem winter snowstorm moving in on the city, it was time for the tour to move on to the third and final stop on the shawarma tour, Mitzle. You go in or just give up? What do you think? We've eaten so much already. Give up or go in? You decide. I want the shawarma. Go in or go give up? You decide. It's a very big question. We've eaten so much, we can't move.
a quick summary of uh, this place. Um, I found it very exciting. The meat was delicious. I couldn't really taste much lamb there. The servings here are a little bit smaller than other places, but the ambience, the vibe is fantastic. All the different salads and extras are interesting. So definitely a, a, a place highly recommended. I, I like all of them. They're all good, very good. Uh, the first one is nice, the second one and the third one, they're all great to warm up. That's what I need. Uh, my favorite was the second place, uh, Turkey Shook. Uh, and I really like it here, I like the, like the ambiance the atmosphere. Sean here and the other guy, Avi, they're doing a wonderful job. We love them. We love them. Yay! No way to see the people traffic. It's amazing. We love you guys. on Shimshon Eats Jerusalem. She's celebrating Novigod. We're starting with the soups. Hi, Benjamin. Nice Hello. to see you. Yeah, sure. Good to see you. And so today, I'm very apprehensive. Um, I'm going to be doing a food review which is different from everything else. I've been to all these fancy steak restaurants. I've been across the road to fancy Mexican food. But today, we're doing a mitzvah. We're helping people. We're going to be trying the food that is in a soup kitchen for the Hineni. And uh, Benjamin Philip is here. Um, tell us in a nutshell, should I be scared? Should I be worried? This is a whole new outside my comfort zone. Is we have a so-called humanitarian restaurant where we give food away free to those who are really in need. But there are also those people who are lesser in need but come here for one, a very reasonable cheap meal for lunch and at the same time they're able to embrace those who are less fortunate. And by the people coming here, those who are in need, another need, we take away the stigma of a soup kitchen and we make it into a humanitarian restaurant that gives the feeling that everybody on the other way is connected in one society. And that's the beauty of it. Here you'll see a millionaire sitting to a beggar and they're sitting on the same table. And I think that's the beauty of this place. Um, I'm coming in with two principles. Um, first of all, um, I never accept anything free, so I'm going to pay for the meal. You said you can't pay, but you can give a donation. So I'm going to give a 100 shekel donation, because it's normally 25 shekels. The second of all is I'm sticking to the truth. If I find the schnitzel too oily, or if I find the soup too salty, I'm going to have to say that. I have no choice. I can't uh, sugarcoat the bitter pill. I have to tell the truth, because I'm a food reviewer. Should I just back out of all this? I'm scared, I'm stressed. Just go across the road, have, uh, go to Taco Lewis, have the best taco meal for 48 shekels, and I'm happy, and I've got no stress, no problems. Or should I go ahead with this project? What do you think? No, we're doing this. I'm the... scared, I'm awkward. it's awkward for me. I'm out of my comfort zone. What should I do? Walk out or continue? We're doing this. We're doing it? Okay. You know what? That's the beauty of it. Right. Because finally you come across something that makes you doubt. That's that right. That you have fear of. That's right. And that's the beauty of your name. Okay. Abraham, where are you? Hineni, here I am, ready, prepared to do something that I'm scared of. And that's the beauty. Here okay. you can actually, for everybody who comes here, you can push your boundaries. It's a mitzvah campaign today, we're going to do it. Let's go, everyone. Okay. Minutes later, Benjamin and Mohammed emerged from the kitchen with a sample of Hineni's finest foodstuffs for Shimshon's evaluation. These are some of the combinations that we have in the soup. This is an onion soup. Oh, that sounds good. Right, so I'll give you a taste of the onion soup. Now we work with a lot of people from East Europe right. who like things thick. Okay. Right. You're like a Yiddish Baba. Eat more, eat more, eat more, you give me some mama. I would say it's decent, 
not outstanding, but we're not here for outstanding cuisine. It's got um, in it definitely ch uh, chicken soup powder, and it's very salty. Um, so re reasonable, oh, well, uh, but um, it's hot and it's filling, so that, that's good. With the starter out of the way, it was time for Shimshon to try out the rest of the dishes that the venue had prepared for his evaluation. Uh, I just want you to taste. So it's uh, quite nice, it's got a Middle Eastern uh, Balkan flavour to it. Uh, even the Greeks probably eat this in the Turkish. Delicious. Shimshon's appetite showing no signs of slowing down, the Australian proceeded to demolish all the other dishes on the menu. While Shimshon continued talking into the food, we talked to another patron of the venue who was happy to talk about how much Hineni's service had been of benefit to her. Hineni, here I am in Hineni. It's a wonderful organization that provides food for people that you know need it, like me, myself, a single mother. Um, it gives me extra time to take care of my kid versus cooking, like, you know, chopping and all that. So thank you so much for all this delicious food. While Hanani would love to be able to provide meals to everybody requiring them, the reality is not so fortunate. As manager Benjamin explained to me, there is a substantial shortfall between how many meals the organization is financially capable of producing and how many actually require its services. That shortfall results in plenty of needy Jerusalemites going hungry. These are the amount of meals we distribute beside the restaurant. 300 meals, 420 meals, 360 meals, 660 meals. These are the amounts of meals that we distribute on a daily basis. Hineni is supported by donations and staffed by volunteers. Those volunteers prepare food for distribution on site and through other means from the organization's small premises located off Shlom Sion Street in central Jerusalem. Okay. Management explains how the kitchen relies upon industrial machinery in order to take food from the kitchen and prepare it for distribution to Jerusalem's hungry. Meals a day we want to. And the beautiful thing is what we do is once the meat or the meat, the, the meat has been cooked, or the food has been cooked. If it's not being served directly, then we do it for pre-packing. It goes from the oven, which is this one here, straight into the blaster. Now what does the blaster do? It brings down directly the food from 180 to 100 degrees to about 4 degrees above zero. Preserving vitamins, preserving taste, and giving a longer life shelf. And tomorrow is, uh, is Thursday, we distribute only tomorrow 800 packages uh, for, uh, for people that have difficulties. Uh, a lot of elderly people, Holocaust survivors, and uh, they're, uh, they're very happy with these meals because some people are otherwise without food during Shabbat. Here we have this one. Potatoes, schnitzel, those are the round packages, couscous, meatballs, vegetables. One small surprise in store before Shimshon and I head for the road, the premises also has a small synagogue on site, as well as a gold-plated elaborate menorah. We have a special exhibition about this, and there is no, and there's no, there's no, uh, There's no second one like that. The extraordinary people making the Hineni program work include the volunteers responsible for handing out food from the canteen itself. We spoke to two of them who were participating in the Masa program and working at the kitchen several days per week. What are your names? I'm Mokrili. 
My name is Sonic. Okay, you come as volunteers? Yeah, um, we're volunteering here through a program called Artfark, which is like a gap year program. Oh, um, okay. yeah. And what organization do you belong to? Uh, Masa. According to Benjamin, many of the frequent accessors of the service arrived to the kitchen after receiving a referral through the Jerusalem municipality's social services. Have here. So I have a lot of tourists who come here. Oh, okay. I got a lot of people from the Urban who come here. Oh, okay. I got people that work at, at uh, Mizrat uh, uh -huh. uh, People that work, you know, in the social welfare departments that want a good meal and they know this place because they refer people to us. I'm very proud of everything you're doing, helping all these uh, needy people. And I want people to get involved. I want them to donate money. I want them to, donate, to come and help and get involved. Can you please give details how we contact you, how do we donate, and how do we um, volunteer? Um, you know, people can always be involved with us through donations. Uh, you can go to henenijerusalem.org and you can make a donation through PayPal. But money is not all what we look for. We look for rebuilding our community. We want people to actually become part of our organization by volunteering, by opening your heart and be with people. Money is important, but your heart and your smile and you reaching out to your fellow men is even more powerful than money. Please come, say hineni to your fellow men and be prepared to help those in need. Okay, I'm going to give you one more hug because I really appreciate what you do. Jim and I may have come to Hineni to check out their food, but we ended up experiencing something much more significant. Hineni is located off Shlomstone Street in downtown Jerusalem. To get more videos from me, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. There's more than 1 million Russian Jews in Israel who celebrate the festival of Novikod, which means in Russian New Year, um, which basically um, is the 2022 coming up, and uh, everyone has a party and eats certain Russian food, including the Olivia potato salad and lots of other things. And so we're here with the Russian community celebrating Novikod. We're starting with the soups. We've got the Georgian pastry kachapuri coming in a few minutes. And we're in the middle of Jerusalem, uh, experiencing the real, exciting, culinary Jerusalem. שאמורים להיות ממש נעים עם תערובת הגבינות, תולשים את הלחם שמסביב ומנגבים ממש כמו שאנחנו מנגבים חומוס. זה למעשה לא, לא מאפה במלוא מובן המילה, אלא קערה לפונדוק הזה בסגנון הגרוזין. צריכים לחתוק ככה או ביד? איך אומרים? זה, זה לא משנה. אוקיי. זה לא משנה. העיקר שיהיה לך טעים. אוקיי, בוא נראה. אנחנו קצת טובלים את זה בפנים. אה, משהו כזה. וואו. מערבבים את זה. אוקיי, עם הגבינה. כאילו, עם מזלג, עם הגבינה. המזלג, אוקיי. אתה צריך לעבוד כאן. זה הספיק להתקרר בזמן ש... בזמן ההסבירי. וואו. בזמן ההסבירי. וואו. This is heaven. This is what it's about. We're here for this. אוקיי. זה סוג של בקט, וזה לא מעניין, אני מוצא את זה בצד הבקט, זה דברים טכניים שאפשר לשפר. הסכימות, דמי ניהול, הכל יקר. אז לפי דעתי אתה צריך אולי לתת הנחה יותר קטנה, עשרה אחוז, ואתה צריך להעלות את המחירים, כי לא המטרה לקבל אלפי לוקחות, זה מטרה זה להרוויח יותר כסף. זה דעתי, המחירים שלך חמישים אחוז מהמחיר של אחרים. אבל אתה צריך להחליט מה אתה אומר למה מה שאני אומר, אתה מסכים או לא מסכים או לא חשבת על זה אף פעם. לבנות את הטאבון הזה הייתה אחת החוויות הראשונות שלי כאן במקום הזה. זאת אומרת שהבנתי שאני לא מצליח למצוא הטאבון שאני הייתי רוצה למצוא למעטים שלי, והבנתי שאני רוצה לבנות אותו בעצמי. הטאבון נבנה מ-800 
מבינים שכל אחד הייתי צריך להתאים אותה בגודל ולחתוך אותה בזווית מסוימת כדי שביחד כל הלבנים הללו ייצרו ספירה וגם ייצרו ערובה ש... שמאפשרת לעשן לא להיכנס אל תוך החנות אלא לצאת החוצה בלי שהיא מקררת את החנות הערובה הזאת בניתי את זה ונהניתי מכל רגע תוך כדי עבודה למרות שזה לקח לי חודש לבנות אותו אבל זה היה מעניין אני בכל זאת אוהב אותך ורוצה להגיד לכולם לבוא ואתה איש מקסים שיהיה בהצלחה תודה רבה